Major funding for these broadcasts has been provided by grants from New York Community Bank, Amtrust Title Insurance Company, Perfect Building Maintenance, m and Bank, Customers Bank, Marks Paneth LLP, Capital One Bank, Collins Building Services, Meridian Capital Group. Additional support has been provided by grants from AKA Hotel Residences Corman Communities, Aerial Property Advisors, Amarin Bank, Bank of America Merrill Lynch, Briarwood Organization, Chase Commercial Mortgage Lending, Chase Commercial Term Lending, Citizens Bank, Dime Community Bank, Douglaston Development Levine Builders, Flushing Bank, Friedman LLP, Handro Properties LLC, Handler Real Estate Organization, Hodges Ward Elliott INC, Investors Bank, James D. Kuhn Real Estate Institute at Syracuse University, John Casamitidis Red Apple Group, Keysight Capital Partners, Matone Group, New Banks, Newmark Knight Frank, Ocean First Bank, Optimum Window Manufacturing Corp., People's United Bank, Rockefeller Group, Rosewood Realty Services, Stonehenge NYC, SVN CPEX Real Estate Services, Tierra CRG, the Maringo Family Foundation, and these friends. I really want to go to Georgetown University. Maybe I'll go to USC. Maybe I'll get a job at the Appropriations Committee. How about going back to New York? I really love New York. How about the New York City Housing Preservation Development? Something called CPC. Now I have to take a challenge. I really have to be challenged. I'm going to be the president of the Settlement Housing Fund. I have the president today, Alexa Seawall. Thanks for being here. Hi, Michael. Thank you so much for having me. So since you have a wonderful family history, why don't we start with your mother's side and then we'll talk about your dad's side. Sure, I think I have a wonderful family history. Uh, it's a great New York American story. Uh, my mom's side is 100% Italian. Um, not too much is known about my, my grandfather's side of the family. We know that his dad was a musician, a talented musician. Uh, who lost his job during the depression and went to work in the New York City subway system, um, taking tokens. And um, he married my grandmother who came from a little bit of a more moneyed background. My grandfather was able to, uh, because of the of a, a uncle on his mother's side was able to attend NYU and get a degree in accounting. Um, he, also served in World War II. He was in New Caledonia and um, ran a big kitchen, a big mess where everybody wanted to go to because apparently his food was the best. And I can attest to that because he made incredible Italian food for us growing up, big pots of um, sauce and meatballs and pasta. And he would just mess up the whole kitchen and everybody else would have to clean it up, but it was worth it because the food was great. Um, on my mom's mother's side, uh, we know quite a bit more about her history because she actually had a family that became quite prominent. They were prominent in Italy and prominent here as sculptors. Um, that was on her grandmother's side. Um, her grandmother, um, Yola uh, Picciarelli, was the youngest of seven. She had six older brothers. Um, their family immigrated to New York from the Massa Carrera uh, area of Italy um, in 1888. And um, they had all, all of her brothers had studied sculpture in Italy. And when they came to New York, they really became the family of brothers, especially uh, Attilio Picciarelli, um, who people would turn to to sculpt their, into marble um, their statues. So 
Um, my uncles, my great uncles actually carved the Lincoln Memorial, the, the, the um, sculpture of Lincoln that sits in the Lincoln Memorial. And I believe um, we have a photo, a picture of you and your brother at the Lincoln Memorial. Yeah, we went to visit it when we were little. Uh, my parents wanted us to see it. It was super cool. We've also gone around New York to see some of his sculptures. Um, he has a sculpture in Columbus Circle and uh, at the New York Public Library. So that's a pretty cool thing to see little pieces of your family around New York. Um, they had a studio up in the Mott Haven section of the Bronx um, and the family lived uh, next door to the studio. And my grandmother told my mother all kinds of stories about that studio. Um, Fiorello LaGuardia used to come and hang out with my uncles there. Um, so that's, it's pretty neat. Um, my, my mother's grandfather uh, also immigrated to New York at the turn of the century. Um, he was a jeweler, he was a goldsmith and had a studio in uh, Manhattan where he worked um, and my great uncle worked. And so actually lots of artists on my mother's side of the family, which unfortunately did not find its way to me, but uh, maybe somewhere down the line, somebody will be pick up those. Hey, maybe, uh, maybe it'll things. be the children, they'll, they'll become the artists. Yes, hopefully. So tell me about the dad. Dad is uh, dad's side is very interesting. The Greek side of the family. Yeah, my dad is an is an immigrant. He came um, to the to New York when he was fifteen years old. He was um, born in a very small village in the mountains outside of Sparta in Greece, uh, a village called Sustianos. Um, he grew up there with his family. His father was the village priest. Um, his mother ran their home. Um, he was one of five kids growing up. Uh, he has a, a younger sister and um, three brothers. They were very, very poor. Um, the village really had nothing. Um, no running water, no electricity, and was at the center of a lot of shifting dynamics in Europe um, at the time. Um, he, his village was occupied during World War II by Germans and Italians, um, which was hard enough. But after the war, the civil war set in in Greece, and that was truly devastating to his village and to his family personally. Um, there was, you know, uh, family against family, uh, villager against villager, a lot of distrust. Um, his mother's uncle was shot in his bed um, and his father was threatened by a, a right-wing um, agent who um, had decided that the village was up to no good. And when, uh, at that point, my family, my grandfather decided that he should leave um, and seek safety for him and his family um, in, the, in, in the US. So he actually um, came over first. He um, got a job um, in upstate New York in Binghamton where there was a, a big Greek community. He had a sister there, luckily, who was able to help him come over. Um, and the archdiocese helped my father, my grandfather get a visa to work. And um, at that, after he was able to get a visa to work and live in, in the US, he sent for my father and my other, um, my aunt and my uncles and my grandmother. And they came over in a few different shifts um, because my grandmother had fallen ill and they weren't all able to come at the same time. Um, but they did eventually all make it over. Um, they, they, went to at first to Indiana because my grandmother had an uncle there um, but my grandfather was able to get a job working at a church um, in New York and they came and settled um, in New York in um, 1952. So tell me a little bit about mom and dad and then it's time to talk about Alexa. My parents were both very good students, very studious um, obviously, they came from de very different backgrounds. My mom 
um, was a, described herself as a little girl who liked to read books in the shower um, to hide from everybody else when they were trying to get her to go outside and do other things and all she wanted to do was read. Her family had moved to Crestwood, New York, um, which is in Yonkers. Um, it's a sort of a Catholic enclave, still is really, and she went to Catholic schools growing up. She went to Marymount for college and then um, decided to get her master's degree in history and went to NYU for her master's degree. That's where she met my dad. My dad uh, took a little bit more of a circuitous route to get there, but ended up enrolled in a PhD program at NYU. Um, after studying, um, he went to uh, City University in New York um, and then out to Indiana University and then came back to get his PhD at NYU. Um, that's where he met his, my mom. They had a couple of classes together um, they were both studying history. And what really cemented the relationship was the great blackout, 1965. They um, ended up in their class when the, when the lights went out and they, my father asked my mom to go get a cup of coffee while they waited. And of course the lights didn't come back on for a while. Um, my mom had been uh, bribed by her parents to stay local for, for for her master's degree, but with a cute MG, white MG. And she um, took my dad home back up to Washington Heights where his family was living at the time. And he was living um, in the building with, with, his, with his parents and siblings. And that was, that was the start of their relationship. My parents um, got married and lived in the Bronx for a few years. My mom got a job teaching in the Bronx. My dad got a job at Queensborough Community College where he was uh, a, a working on his PhD, which he eventually got. When they got pregnant with me, their firstborn, they bought a house in Edgemont in Westchester County, which is a school district between in, in Scarsdale, between sort of Yonkers and Scarsdale. Um, they bought a house that they still own and live in. And uh, I was born there in 1974. My brother came two years later in 1976. And uh, it was the, the four of us and our, eventually our two cats that we grew up with there. It was a really nice childhood. My parents instilled values in us around uh, the importance of education. They chose Edgemont because it was a really solid school district where they felt we could get an excellent education. Uh, and we did. Uh, Edgemont's wonderful. It remains one of the best um, public school districts in the country. The really nice thing about my childhood and the thing that I think st stayed with me the most is the amount of traveling that we were able to do growing up. Uh, both my parents were teachers. We had summers off, all of us. And most summers, in my earlier years, we would go back to my dad's village and visit there. I mean, I can't believe what you could do back then with a middle class, with middle class salaries. I mean, we went everywhere. We were in Egypt, we went to Russia. One summer we, we flew to Brussels. Um, we bought a Volvo station wagon and we traveled through 13 countries that summer, the four of us. They put air mattresses down in the back of the station wagon and my brother and I would sleep back there if we got tired. It's just like an absolute safety nightmare now, but it was wonderful memory making. So we did a ton of traveling. Um, that was really formative for me, um, especially a trip that we made to Egypt. Um, that was my first, I mean, I had always been exposed to different ways that people lived. It really was a great way to kind of take us out of our suburban bubble that we were raised in and see the rest of the world and how other people lived. Um, and Egypt in particular, I think was very formative for me because it came at an age, I was around, uh, I guess, 13 years old. And to really see that kind of poverty uh, was shocking um, and opened me up to the world in a way that I think I wouldn't have otherwise been. Um, and so really great uh, memories of, of travel and being able to spend time as a family, it was nice. So how does the young lady from uh, the suburbs decide to go to Georgetown in Washington? Do you like basketball? I love basketball. I loved, 
I loved basketball. I grew up with the phenomenal, you know, 1980s Knicks team. So that was, I think we were all basketball fans um, growing up. And I was definitely excited to go to a school that had a basketball program and had school spirit. I definitely wanted a bigger environment. I graduated with 110 kids from Edgemont High School. I wanted to see something different and bigger. I was very interested in going to a city. And um, in particular, Washington had a lot of appeal because I was interested in in government and I was interested in, in international studies. And um, so, so Georgetown really offered all of that. And um, it had the benefit of having a beautiful little protected town of Georgetown, neighborhood of Georgetown within this larger um, framework of Washington, D.C. and all that Washington, D.C. had to offer. So I had studied history and, and government at Georgetown, and I knew that I wanted to uh, continue really with government. I loved, uh, I loved studying um, about government, and I loved the idea of being able to make a difference in my community and in New York. And so I graduated. I didn't quite know what I was going to do. I came back home to my house in Edgemont with my parents. And a good friend of mine from Georgetown, had, her dad, um, had a connection to, the, to LISC, Local Initiative Support Corporation, which is um, an intermediary uh, nonprofit organization that makes grants and provides capital and financing to community development endeavors. And I got a short-term stint there working on a um, research project while I was applying to graduate school. And uh, my, uh, my best friend from high school and I had made a plan to travel before she started medical school and I started graduate school. So we got into medical school and, and I got into um, public policy school uh, to get a public policy degree from the University of Southern California. And before we packed up to go to graduate school, we moved to Prague in the Czech Republic and lived there for four months, which was a hoot, like such a fun time. We rented an apartment in this beautiful old section of Prague and we got jobs um, waitressing at a little cool little restaurant in Prague. So um, we did that um, as, a, as, a, as a way to sort of ready ourselves to move on to the next phase of, of things. So you finished USC and then what do you decide to do? So uh, finished USC, I applied to something called the Presidential Management Fellowship Program, which placed students, recently gradu uh, recent graduates into jobs in the federal government. Um, I, unlike everybody else who was lined up to go to the State Department and the Defense Department, I wanted to go to the Department of Housing and Urban Development to continue my uh, to pursue my interest in affordable housing and community development. And I got a job um, at an office there that makes grants to local communities for homeless intervention work. Um, and so I worked at HUD for a couple of years. Um, through the Presidential Management Fellowship Program, I was able to rotate to different offices. And one of the offices that I went to was at the Senate Appropriations Committee. And I worked there for a few months as an intern. And in 2001, um, when Jim Jeffords switched his, he was caught, he, it was a divided Senate, but it was a Republican Senate, he switched and it became a Democratic um, Senate. And they needed, the Democrats needed to staff up their committees. And so I was asked to go back as full time professional staff on the Senate Appropriations Committee. And so I was there from 2001 to, 2000, for, to 2006, and that was a truly incredible experience. So how do you make the transition to the New York City Housing Preservation and Development in August of 2006? So I um, had been working for appropriations for several, several years. Um, I married my husband in um, 2001, we had a really nice wedding up here in Westchester. Um, we had a Greek, Orthodox, a Greek Orthodox ceremony and a beautiful reception afterwards. And we uh, got pregnant with our daughter in 2005 and decided that we wanted to move back up to New York to be close to my parents and Dave's parents who live in Connecticut. 
And so I knew somebody in common um, with Sean Donovan, who was at that time the Commissioner of Housing and uh, Housing Preservation and Development in New York City. Sean hired me to come to work for him as his Assistant Commissioner for Federal Affairs. And that um, lasted six years, and then you had the opportunity to go to the CPC, Community Preservation Corporation. Yep, I was at, and uh, was at HPD for quite a long time, worked for three amazing commissioners. You know, my portfolio grew. I went to work for one of them at CPC, Rafael Sestero. And not soon after, not long after starting at CPC, the job at Settlement Housing Fund became available. Um, Settlement Housing Fund is a, a citywide nonprofit that does affordable housing development and community development. We've been around for about 50 years. I'm the only, I'm only the third um, executive director of Settlement Housing Fund. Um, it's a truly remarkable organization that has a, a, a incredible legacy that I was very excited to kind of step into and think about the next iteration for an organization like Settlement Housing Fund. Um, and we've done a lot of really great work. I mean, prior to my getting there and since my, my being here, um, we have an incredible team. Um, I think, you know, one of our, our flagship projects is in Mount Eden in the Bronx, New Settlement Apartments. That's a development that had been um, taken over by the city through uh, tax foreclosure back in the 80s and Settlement Housing Fund took over in 1990. Um, the transformation of those buildings and of the neighborhood as a result was remarkable. And uh, about a few years ago, we refinanced that portfolio again, um, did a major solar panel installation, the largest installation on an affordable housing um, preservation deal um, in New York. And the buildings look beautiful. Um, they have another 60 years of affordability. Um, and so it's really an anchor and a bedrock for that neighborhood. And that's the work of Settlement Housing Fund is to use housing and specifically affordable housing as a way to stabilize neighborhoods, um, help families really become anchored in a neighborhood and have the ability to to flourish and um, with good schools and services. And so we also work on bringing in those sorts of services and community programming. And we do this not only in the Bronx, but we have developments in lower and upper Manhattan and in Crown Heights in Brooklyn. And you also host the um, lotteries, correct? Yeah, we market affordable housing for other developers who don't know how to do it. Um, and um, we've got around 1,500 units of affordable housing now in our pipeline, everything from new construction on a um, public housing site at Twin Parks, um, which should be coming online next year. We'll start construction, and we're working on a major rehab of Harlem River Houses in Harlem, which is a public housing development. That's another 700 units that's going to get a major upgrade in terms of capital improvements and living condition improvements for residents of NYCHA, while of course keeping those buildings affordable um, to the to the residents there. So tell me how you met your husband and tell me about the two children. Um, so I met my husband, we were both in New York for a, a short period of time in, in 1998. Um, we started dating and Dave moved down to live with me in Washington DC where we got engaged. Um, after we were married, he went to law school. He graduated law school when I was pregnant with our firstborn. So we got kind of a late start with the law school thing. Um, I was a lonely pregnant woman while he was studying for his bar exam. And we moved back to New York and, and moved to Manhattan, bought an apartment on 88th Street and sort of moved around a little bit. We're in Brooklyn for a few years. Um, we had our son, John, in um, a few years after Anna, and then decided to move up to the suburbs. We had um, a hard time finding enough space, and uh, uh, I really wanted to have a simple public um, high school um, you know, situation for the kids. I didn't want to have to figure out the, the, whole, the whole school thing. I had such a good experience in, uh, in uh, growing up in Westchester. 
So it's the four of us. We live in Larchmont, New York, um, which is a lovely community um, in the, the town of Mamaroneck. Um, we've adopted two dogs. We've got two Britneys who are very important members of our family. And um, like my family growing up, we have our traditions with the things that we love to do. We go to Maine every summer. Um, we like to, you know, go to Yankees games and um, hike. My kids have lots of sports and activities that they're involved in. So I have a, a nice balance between work and life demands. And you do a great job at the Settlement Housing Fund. And I'm very happy that you're my guest today. And thanks, thanks so much, Michael. Thank my you. Bye-bye. Bye.